I recommend before you start this video to watch in this order because I will be skipping through red content. And with that, enjoy the show. Hello everybody, this is Dolpha, and we're back in Sunrider Liberation Day Return. It is time to start Asaga's arc. Technically not, because I need to get all the other endings. Well, the three of them. Okay, so, three bad ends, I think. Alright, so the first things first, we need to skip through all this. Right, don't steal it. Okay, now this is where things might change. Oh! Okay. Does this have something to do with what Sola was saying earlier? Ahem. Unfortunately, time travel is nowhere as flexible as one would expect, or else I would use my powers more often. The main limitation of time travel is that when individuals and events get moved out of sequence in the timeline, a time paradox can occur. I think I've read this before. Which I have. Alright, uh, I don't know. Uh, stay together. Alright, what's gonna happen? Hello, boys! Alright, let's see. Anything new? Question, question, question mark. Okay. T Manners, question mark, hours before the Liberation Day Massacre, question mark, hours until Chigara enters the mind stream. He paced for an unknown amount of time and finally crumbled down to the small bunk. Ah, where is Claude? Where's anyone? And what is up with my throat? <coughs> okay, all right. Testing, testing, okay. Am I really trapped in here? He tried to estimate how many hours had passed since he had been confined in the brig. Had it been seven hours? Ten? His panic began to get the better of him. But that would mean it's already too late to keep Chigara from entering the mind stream. No, I have to get out of here! He stood and pounded the glass, but it was pointless. Let me out of here! You're all making a mistake! No one can hear you. He had pounded the glass until his fists had become bloody stumps. He sat face down on his bed, his expression vacant. At least 20 hours must have passed since he was captured, meaning he was now too late. What had happened outside? Why had nobody tried to rescue him? Had something happened to Sola? And just where did Claude vanish to? Did Claude simply lose interest in this mission because he got captured? Ah, uh, that's it. She only sent me here to watch me struggle. She honestly doesn't give a damn about the massacre or about liberating Sira. From the very beginning, the only reason she was on the ship was to laugh at my suffering. Now that I've been captured, She's just jumping to some other universe. She's probably already found some other space captain to laugh at now. I bet she's already settling into his sick bay, trying to give him a medical exam. Shields continued with his monologue, his mind slowly cracking. Ah, uh, I should have known Ava would just go along with what bastard Shields wants. After all, all she's good for is just following orders. I wonder, what happened to Sola? She's probably taken it all upon herself to stop the massacre alone now. I hope she's alright. What was the point of this? In the end, I couldn't accomplish anything. Bad end? Or not? Here we go. The redness. The sudden rumbling of the ship woke Shields from his slumber. What's going on? All of a sudden, the ship shook violently, knocking him from his bed. He crashed onto the steel floor. Ah! I guess it's finally all ending. I guess I really did mess up. He raised his head to the sound of pounding on the other side of the glass. The cell's door opened and a figure crashed in. Hello! Oh my god! No! Okay. That um, sprite is new. And also, 
Hearts breaking. Uh, uh, Captain. Sulla leaned against the cell's doorframe while clutching her gut. Blood oozed out from a hole the size of a tennis ball on her stomach. Sola! Uh, uh. She collapsed into the cell. Shields rushed towards her and caught her into his arms. You must escape. It all came to pass, as you said. Chigara entered the mindstream and then killed everyone at the victory celebration. I attempted to stop her, but the hunter drones overpowered me. Shields applied pressure to Sola's wound. No! Sola! Hang on! I'm going to get you out of here! Suddenly, more memories played back in his head. No! Not again! This is exactly like last time! The ship groaned as it took hits. The Alliance now seeks to destroy the entire packed fleet as well as Sira with a new weapon. The other Kyoto Shields leaves a hopeless charge against the Machiavelli actual to stop them. Despite my best efforts, I could not convince him to detain Chigara. I have failed. I am sorry. No, Sola! It was me who failed! I got captured like this! I couldn't help anyone! G -g uh, uh, uh. It, it will not be long now. Get to the life pod. I will merely slow you down. No! Don't worry, Sola! I'm going to get you out of here! Ah, uh, Captain. I did not fear death, for I had accepted what awaited me at the end of my journey. Nothing but darkness. But that darkness was replaced with... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Scylla's so eyes grew dim as her breaths became ragged. At least, at the very end, allow me one moment of selfishness. Sola, don't talk as if this is the end! Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, cradle me, envelop me. I wish to feel nothing but your warmth as I fade away. Sola! Shields held Sola to his chest and held her tight. At last, I have you. Her body went stiff as Sola's spirit finally left. Shields howled and pounded the floor. Y you can't! I came back to save everyone! What the hell is the point if you die too? I don't want this! Tears streamed down his face as he realised that he had merely made the new future even worse. His mission had been an abject failure. At least in his own timeline, Sola was still alive. What will happen now? His mind went blank as despair flooded his mind. The voice of his other self echoed through the brig. Today, the Sunrider stood her ground. We did not run, but protected all those we hold dear until we fell into the black night. We did not falter in our defense of our family. Today we perished to save our home. No, in the end, I only fail once more. He closed his eyes as a massive explosion engulfed the entire brig. Everyone, I'm sorry. Shields felt his body vaporize as a Sunrider collided into the Machiavelli actual. The opposite end of the brig came flying towards him as the entire ship compressed from the force of the impact. He died the instant the wall of fire crushed him. Bad end. Trapped. Solever. So, there are other versions of that. So, I'm guessing Asaga version? I don't think there's an Ava. Or Ikari, hmm. Ah, uh, looks like you messed up, Captain. And you made the future even worse than before by getting Sola killed. You need to find some evidence to get Ava to believe you. When you're trapped in the brig, or avoid getting captured by the other Kyoto Shields in the first place. Try again, this time by either stealing the hollow from the sickbay, or not blowing your cover.
Okay. Well, there we go. Another ending. I am happy with that. Okay. Okay, so two more. And 72%. Alright. Where do we need to go now? I save in a lot of places. Ugh. Right here. Okay then, so we're back on Ava's arc, and this time we're going to choose not to trust Ava, basically. Okay, we can't get captured here. Ah, it's do or die time. I can't afford to be imprisoned here. Looks like I've got to call Ava's bluff. As Shields was being escorted away by two armed marines, he ducked down and swiped his leg under one of his escort, knocking him off his feet. In a connected movement, he tore the escort's rifle from his grasp as the escort fell and dug the nozzle of the gun into the other escort's helmet like a bayonet. Ah! Ava spun around to face shields as the wall of marines readied their weapons. Shit! Non-lethals only! Don't kill! Uh-oh. Shields dived as the floor he was standing on a moment ago was pulverized with shock pellets. Fuck! I gotta get out of here! Ah! He spun back to his feet and bolted down the hallway. I gotta find cover! Shields burst into the crowded mess hall to the surprised looks of the crew. C captain The crewman's eyes widened when Shields leaped over his table, thoroughly scattering his tray of roast beef and mashed potatoes across the table. Just then, a squad of marines burst in after Shields. Holy! The crewman fell off his bench as the marines chased after Shields, thoroughly smashing the entire table he was previously eating on into little plastic fragments. Unbelievable! Shields ducked behind a table as shot pellets bounced all around him, filling the air with the smell of burning wires. Never thought I'd be hunted down in my own damn mess hall! He held up a large plastic tray like a shield and made his way toward the hallway opposite to where he had entered. I've got to come up with an escape plan. I won't be able to run like this forever. Oh, brilliant. There's more. Just as he reached the opposite end of the mess hall, a second squad of marines poured in, in front of him. S surrounded! I is this... Jules couldn't even finish his thought when he was sprayed with shock rounds from every direction. G -g -ah! His body convulsed to the floor as alternating electric currents coursed through his muscles. No! Uh, Eva. He lost consciousness as the marines surrounded him. T manners question mark. Oh. Oh. We're here. Okay. I can't skip it either. Shields came to inside a holding tank in the brig. The entire ship shook and swayed as if taking kinetic hits from every direction. Ah! Uh, uh, what happened? The ship had already lost most of its power. Another hit shook the floor, nearly throwing shields off its feet. Oh my god, my throat. There. Did the battle already begin? No, wait. This is... A dark realization dawned on him, spreading a black pool of horror throughout his body. Ava crashed into the brig, clutching her bloody stomach. She dragged herself to his cell and punched the cell door's button. She fell immediately as the door opened into Shields' arms. Ava! Wh what happened? He applied pressure to Ava's wound. T -t I was too late. Chigara is dead. But the massacre still occurred as before. I took a hit from a hunter drone just after I managed to get Chigara. If I had just been a few seconds quicker. Ava! But I thought you were... <sighs> I found out that our chief engineer had a backup plan in case her identity was ever discovered. She built a back door into our main reactor so she could shut down the entire ship remotely. I had to stop you from kidnapping Chigara before she disabled the ship. I... It... was the only way. N no Shield's face lost all pigmentation. Sweat dripped down his neck. Ava had been on his side the whole time. It was actually him who was wandering towards a trap, and Ava who was desperately trying to stop his mistake. Then, it's just like before, last time. I didn't trust Ava 
when she warned me about Chigara, and now all this happens because I failed to trust her again. No. No. Everything is my fault. I betrayed you. Again. And now. Get out of here. You know the other Kyoto Shields planning a suicide attack on the Machiavelli Actual. There's nothing more for you to do here. No. I... Shields looked down in defeat. I'm sorry. I should have trusted you. Heh. <laughs> Heh. You only realized that now? G uh. Ava coughed up blood as her eyes lost focus. Idiot. Leave me here and save yourself. Her body stiffened as her spirit finally left. Shills howled and pounded the floor. Y you can't! I came back to save everyone! What the hell is the point if you die too? I didn't want this! Tears streamed down his face as he realized that he had merely made the new future even worse. His mission had been an abject failure. At least in his own timeline, Ava was still alive. What will happen now? His mind went blank as despair flooded his mind. The voice of his other self echoed through the brig. Today, the Sunrider stood her ground. We did not run, but protected all those we hold dear until we fell into the black night. We did not falter in our defence of our family. Today, we perished to save our home. No, in the end, I only fail once more. Oh. <laughs> he closed his eyes as a massive explosion engulfed the entire brig. Everyone, I'm sorry. Shields felt his body vaporise as the Sunrider collided into the Machiavelli Actual. The opposite end of the brig came flying towards him as the entire ship compressed from the force of the impact. He died the instant the wall of fire crushed him. Eva version! Dun dun dun! What's funny? It didn't happen to Ikari. Though technically she did die in space. So that's still bad. Huh. Oh well. Ah, uh, looks like you messed up, Captain. And you made the future even worse than before by getting Eva killed! Oh, you seriously thought you could escape from a squad of armed marines by yourself? Did you forget that you're not the one with superpowers in this story, Captain? Try again, and this time, choose to trust Ava! Ah! And there we go. Does that count? Does it? It does. So, I'm guessing Asaga. And the other three endings. Okay, so... The only thing left now is to start Asaga's route. Yay! Hopefully I'm right. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay then, so let's start Asaga's arc. Nobody else was going to believe a wacky story like this except for Asaga. The ship's ace pilot and self-proclaimed hero of justice would of course be more than eager to join the secret mission to save the galaxy. No other person in Shields' entourage had a bigger enthusiasm for Cracker Jack adventures. Alright, I've made my decision. We're going to recruit Asaga. Come on, let's go find her. Oh, okay, let's go. Okay. T minus 63 hours until the Liberation Day Massacre. 27 hours until Chigara enters the mind stream. Knowing Asaga, she would most likely be in the hangar practicing in the simulator. Shields and Claude snuck onto the floor of Deck 2 and headed to the Blackjack, hidden amongst the steel frames of the rider bays. Sure enough, they found Asaga hanging out around her rider with a distant face. What was I doing? I've been losing my temper so easily lately. I hope Sola doesn't start hating me. I'll have to apologize to her later. Uh, after all, Sola's the only person I have left now. Shills whispered to Asaga, cutting into her thoughts. Psst! Asaga, over here! Uh, eh? C captain Is something the matter? Yeah, I need your help. It, it's kind of an emergency. The safety of the ship. No, the entire galaxy is at stake. 
Those were the only words needed to snap Asaga out of her doldrums. Uh, oh, right! I'll be right over! Okay. Okay, so the simulator was in the hangar, then. I never knew that. Okay. Asuka joined the two time travellers in a secluded corner of the hangar. The trio whispered to each other. So, what's the situation, Captain? Shields thought to himself as to how best explain the obviously very convoluted situation to Asuga. It turns out you are right after all, and Shigara really is a prototype. I had the doctor here run a more detailed biometric scan, and there's no question about it anymore. She really was a spy all this time. Asuka's eyes lit up with excitement. I, I, I knew it! S somehow, I could feel it in my gut, you know. I'm glad. It wasn't just me going crazy. So, are you going to detain her? That's the problem. We can't do anything which will tip off the prototypes. That we're onto them. Everything I've just said is top secret, spoken between just the three of us, okay? In fact, I'll just play along with Chigara, like I've done in the past. We'll be working in the shadows to unravel their plot, but publicly, we're all still being fooled. Uh, understood, Captain! So, do you know what exactly the prototypes plan to do? That is... Now this was where things gets really complicated. Three days from now, we'll have defeated Pact and liberated Sira, but the whole thing's a trap to gather Admiral Grey and the entire Alliance military leadership all into a single victory celebration, where the prototypes will spring their trap and massacre everyone. The ringleader of the trap will be Chigara. I see. I see. So basically, we have three days to stop this mass assassination from happening? without tipping the prototypes off that they've been found out? Yeah, that's basically the situation. Alright! This sounds exactly like the plotline to some spy film. Sign me up, Captain! She'll sigh in relief at how easily Asuka just accepted the situation. If it had been anyone else, no doubt they would have a mountain of questions and doubts. He was right in trusting that Asuka would be up to the task. Alright, now he had to put their next course of action into motion. Unfortunately, he hadn't given this part much thought himself. It looked like he would just have to come up with something on the fly based on the fragmented memories he had of the chain of events which led to the Liberation Day Massacre. According to our intel, Jigara will enter the prototype's mindstream tomorrow, during the battle for Sira. It will be at that moment when she receives a neural message which will brainwash her into carrying out the assassination. We must take every action to ensure that she does not enter the mindstream. Seems like a simple enough solution. From what I can remember, Jigara as she is now would be utterly incapable of killing a single insect, much less a room full of people. The sole cause of Jigara's actions that day was her body being controlled by the leader of the prototypes, who we had all presumed to have died on the Nightmare Ascendant. If we were to simply prevent Chigara from being mind-controlled, then the massacre would never happen. I see. I see. So right now, she's like a sleeper agent, who doesn't even realize she has a secret mission to assassinate the Alliance military leadership. Yeah, that's how it is. Understood, Captain. Then I'll keep an eye on her, and make sure she doesn't try communicating with the other prototypes. Eh <laughs> I'm glad! Asuga? All this time, I was afraid that Chigara was going to take you away forever. I thought for sure you were gonna get fooled by her. Uh, I guess I wasn't giving you enough credit, eh, Captain? Ha! <laughs> Alright! Here's the big chance I've been waiting for! Y you can do it, myself! Uh, hey, Captain! Does this mean you trust me? Asuga? Suddenly, more memories flash by. This time, the images playing back in Shields' head didn't cause pain. Instead, they filled his heart with ease. Oh yeah, a warm embrace. The feeling of relief when he heard her voice over the calm in that life pod. It was Asuga 
who had found him out there, drifting in space. Even though the details were still fuzzy, he could sense that this girl loved him, the most out of all the girls on board this ship. Of course I trust you, Asuga. You were always here, watching my back. Uh, ah! Uh, 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 what the hell is up with this sudden development? It feels like the captain totally just forgot about Jigara. Man, does this mean that he was just acting lovey-dovey before with Chigara to mess with the prototypes all this time? Ugh, he sure got me good with that act. I feel like a tall idiot now. Uh, that shows a ton off my back. Hey, Captain, after all of this over, let's ride off into the sunset together. Big kiss and all. Just like in the movies, alright? Ara ara, Asagas sure gotten bold, eh? Uh, of course I have. Besides, the captain said he trusts me, right? So what's the big problem? What, you have a problem, eh? Well, do you? Asaga. Oh, there we go. <laughs> but before he could answer Asaga's feelings, the klaxon sounded. The hangar crew sprang to action as the ship went into condition red. Men and women readied the riders for immediate action. Shit, I forgot. Ah, crap! Got a sortie! I just confessed my love too! Ah, uh, I just raised my own death flag! Yeah, not a good thing. You've died the most so far as well. <laughs> Honestly. Asuka looked around in a panic. Forget about that now, Captain. We better make ourselves scarce. Okay, Asuka. Stay safe out there. Shield's words managed to calm Asuka down. Alright, I'll be back. With that, Claude and Shields tore away from the hangar. Oh, was that voice good enough for Asuka? Was that how I did it before? I can't remember. Ooh. Alright, more skipping, please. Alright, here we go again. He would always be able to see the blackjack on the battle map. When things got too dicey, he would be able to order her to turn around. But what would the Kyoto Shields on the floor of the bridge right now do? Did he even care for her as he did? Who knows? Okay, more skipping. Yay. Alright, so we want the other endings before the uh, good end. The happy end. So let's go for Don't Blow Cover. Why not? All this again. Destroy the drone. Easy peasy. Alright, hello Asuga. Asuga's always way too happy, isn't she? Ugh. They found Asuga waiting for them beside the Blackjack's maintenance bay. Asuga D. Ruvia returning from duty. Sa! Death flags have nothing on me. Heh, <laughs> welcome back. Good to see you in one piece. And I now have a lead, thanks to what happened during the battle. Shields remembered what Asuka was talking about. During the battle, the Liberty's shoulder maneuvering valve had fractured, sending it into an uncontrollable spin. While Chigara wasn't injured, his past self had sent her to the sickbay to be on the safe side. We couldn't have Chigara while she's sleeping in the sickbay and hide her somewhere for the duration of the battle. But we have another problem. Eh? Eh? But I thought all we had to do was prevent her from entering the mindstream. I haven't quite explained the entire situation yet, sorry. The pack forces under Fontana's command, scheduled to reinforce the combined fleet tomorrow, actually have been sabotaged by the prototypes. There's a Trojan virus embedded deep in their systems, which will allow the prototypes to hijack control of the ships using their hyper brainwaves. Jigara will enter the prototype's mindstream, attempting to disrupt the control over Fontana's ships. However, during that time, the leader of the prototypes will embed herself into Jigara's mind, allowing her to assume control of Jigara during the award ceremony, even in the case that she is defeated. I honestly don't know the details of how the prototype's mindstream work, but from what I've heard from Lin, their bodies can be controlled by their leaders at any time. Although the prototype being controlled can resist to a certain degree as well, with a strong enough force of will. Eh? I'm impressed! You're really knowledgeable about the prototypes, Captain. 
I guess you've been studying your enemy. No, uh, actually, I've learned all of this through first-hand experience. Can you just tell her, please? Come on. The problem is that if Chigara doesn't enter the mindstream, then we'll all die tomorrow when the prototypes assume command of all of Fintana's ships. Unless... If we were somehow able to send a encrypted transmission to Fontana now, warning him of the Trojan, then he could potentially start devising a countermeasure right now. At the very least, he could pull his forces back so that the prototypes can't use his ships against us. There's an encrypted FTL communicator in my office. I could use that. Oh, then that's the problem solved, right? Shields couldn't help but feel guilty about leaving Asuka in the dark about the most important snippet of information that he and Claude did not belong to this timeline and so he couldn't just waltz into his office and use the comm whenever he felt like it. Looks like I'm going to have to figure out a way to sneak into my office while my other self's occupied and have a little chat with Fontana. Oh, another thing. Uh, so we got to kidnap Chigara for nearly 24 hours, right? If we, uh, just nab her from the sick bay, people are gonna realize that she's gone missing, and then they'll come searching for her, which will just tip the prototypes off that we're onto them. Asuka has a point. If Chigara just vanishes into thin air, people are going to start asking questions. We've got to keep the fact that we've kidnapped her a secret for as long as possible. How are we going to do that? Alright. We're going to need to body double. Eh heh heh. So we're gonna take Lin from the brig, put her under, then swap out Chigara with Lin in the sick bay, so that nobody notices. Eh? I like it. Now comes explaining the hard part. There's no other way to explain this plan out to Asuga without revealing the truth. Asuga, there's also something else I need to explain. Shoot! Uh, there's kind of another Kyoto Shields on board this ship right now. Uh, eh? Y you mean the prototypes have a copy of you too? Not quite. I'm not actually the captain you know. I'm actually from the future. That's how I know everything I just told you. To me, I'm just recounting what I've already lived through. Eh! The, the like, totally awesome, Captain! A real life time traveler? Holy shit! I've dreamed of something like this happening, but I've never actually thought it would actually happen! Asuka hopped up and down like a hyperactive girl upon receiving something she had always wanted for her birthday present. Uh, she's totally fine with it. There was no point in even keeping it a secret. Can I have your auto- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That just tickled me. It tickled me. <laughs> C can I have your autograph, Captain? I'm not a celebrity, Asuka. I'm the doctor. Um, a actually, there's not quite the full situation either. There's also currently another Claude Trilo in the sickbay right now. Tending to Chigara as we speak. What? what? Wait, there's two of them saying it? What? What? Come to think of it, Claude's position in this universe is no different from me. Of course, there'd also be a never past Claude Trilo wandering about this timeline, too. So, we'll have to devise a plan to kidnap Chigara out from under my nose without my past self realizing what's going on. Shills rubbed his head. So there was another wrinkle in this plan. Well, your past self's a time traveler too, right? So why don't you just walk up to her and explain the situation? Uh, sorry, Captain, but there are certain reasons why I can't do that. It might be related to the fabric of the universe tearing right in half. I in fact, I think it'd be best if I remained out of sight of my past self for the duration of my stay here, for all our sakes. What the hell is Claude getting at here? 
Alright, then here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the boring part. Claude is going to go down to the brig and pretend she's this timeline's doctor. She'll convince the guards that Lynn has contracted a nasty case of C-Ran measles and needs immediate medical attention. She'll then cart a sedated Lynn to Deck Zero handcuffed to a medical trolley. Meanwhile, I'll go to the sick bay and distract this timeline's Claude. I'm sure it'll be a piece of cake. Mmm, cake. Asuka will wait outside the sick bay while Claude arrives with Lynn. While I'm distracting the other Claude, Asuka will sneak in and swap Chigara with Lynn. Once you've grabbed Chigara, fall back to Crew Quarter 8, which is currently unoccupied, secure Chigara there, and wait for me to arrive. I'll try to beat a hasty retreat as soon as I can. Once we've regrouped, Claude will use the floor access hatch to relocate Chigara to maintenance room D4. While Asuka runs to the mess hall and calls the other kill shields out on the comm, I'll then use that chance to sneak into my office and send Fontana the encrypted call. Do you get all that? Understood, Captain! Let's roll! <laughs> what was that voice? <laughs> Alright, good luck. Okay, more skipping. La 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 Okay. Oh, what do we need? I don't think it matters, does it? Um, ah, leave it. I don't care. Skipping. Oh, here we go. That was fast. Ah, uh, I don't understand any of this. My head hurts. But in the end, the me right now is gonna vanish from existence. But then, I'll still be another Asuga? Who won't even know there was a mission to change the future? I'll just live on, never knowing there even was an event like the Liberation Day Massacre? Basically. In this circumstance, I intentionally sought to skip. Because there's no point reading the same text over and over. Ah! Alright. Got to save on a choice. Because there are about four endings I need. One bad ending, one alternate end, and normal end, and a happy end. Alright, uh, so... Uh, this one. Okay, more skipping. Hello, everybody. The ship power goes down, and now we have Asuka alone with me! Sorry, I couldn't hear anything because of that cutter. We've been had. Shit. I made a mistake. More skipping, please. <laughs> eh? Claude's vanished? Like, into thin air? And now we have a new, huge problem. The prototype leader laid out this trap for us, and we've just stepped right into it. The Sunrider's main reactor has been remotely shut off. Without it, we won't be able to get a FTL transmission sent to Fontana. Even worse, we're essentially sitting ducks for the Loyalist Pack fleet now. Unless we can get power restored ASAP, this ship is going to be destroyed. Eh? How are we going to do that? If I can get to engineering, I might be able to restore the ship's power. It's a long shot, but maybe I can undo whatever the prototype has done to our systems. But wait, the Sunrider also has an emergency FTL transmitter, which operates on a separate battery pack. It's all the way down at deck 2, section 37. But if we can get to it... We could get a message sent to Fontana, even without power. Ah, but Section 37's pretty far from here, and who knows how long it'll take to restore power. Asuka has a point. Asuka has a point. I need to decide which task to prioritize over the other. If we can't restore the ship's power, then we're sitting ducks when it's packed attacks. On the other hand, I doubt I can just waltz into engineering and show my face to the entire crew without getting detained by ship security. And if I get captured before relaying the message to Fontana, then we have no choice but to allow Chigara to enter the mindstream, or else we'll all be killed when the prototypes assume control of Fontana's fleet. Meaning, I damn better send Fontana the warning before revealing myself. We go to the backup comm first, then we go to engineering and restore power. Understood, Captain. Let's get that message sent to Venkaza Fab. So, she gives him the same name as well? Venkaza Fabulous and all that? 
Okay, T minus 50 hours before the Liberation Day Massacre. 14 hours until Chigara. Until Chigara. Until Chigara. It has a my stream. Okay, Shields and Asuka run into the closest maintenance tunnel and headed down to deck 2. Hey, so what's up with this backup comm, anyways? I didn't know we had something like that. It's one of a few systems which keep operating under battery power when the ship loses power like this. Basically, when the ship's disabled, we need to be able to breathe and call for help. That's why life support and the FTL comm keep working. It's a lot more limited than the regular ones, though. We can only transmit a text message less than 120 characters in length. And the message can only be broadcast on the Intergalactic Distress and Rescue Channel. Another problem is that the batteries are still nowhere powerful enough to power life support for the entire ship. The air's going to get really thin on Deck 2 real fast. I'm sure it won't be any tougher than flying a rider, but basically this isn't going to be as easy as just crawling to the comm room and sending a message. Yeah, all the lifts and trams are offline as well. So we'll be crawling through about 300 meters of maintenance tunnels. Alright, lead the way, Captain. Alrighty, more skipping, please. Okay. Asuka still looked to be in good condition. A little cold? No prob. Better cold than too hot, because I'd be drenched with sweat otherwise. Alright, we're about halfway there. Alright, we're about halfway there. It's only going to get colder from here on out. Keep your body moving, and tell me if you lose sensation to your extremities. Understood! Alrighty, more skipping, please. Okay. Brrr. Ah! It's shit cold, Captain! It's even more shit cold than the winters at Ruvia! Ah! Let's finish up here as soon as we can, and get out of here! I can hardly even- I can hardly even talk, because all the snot in my nose is frozen! Ah! Finally, Shields arrived at a tiny alcove in the tunnel. With trembling hands, he removed the wall panel, exposing the controls of the FTL comm. More skipping, please. Is something the matter? More skipping, please. Eh? Ah, oh, come on! Why is nothing going as planned today, of all days? Shit. Ah. Uh. Okay, more skipping. Oh my god. It's like small bits of skipping, and it won't let me. It's annoying. Ugh. But won't that also burn out the comm too? It's the only option we have left. Okay, more skipping, please. Stop, stop! Okay, more again. All right! <laughs> no kidding! Uh, uh th this is nuts! Ah, uh, I remember the time I had to hike up Mount Destiny for my baptism. But this is even worse. Oh, so Asuka is uh, a Christian. Interesting to know. Baptism. Ah, uh, a dumb ritual the church expected me to perform. Honestly, nobody believes anymore that the emperor is God or anything. I had to climb up the whole mountain and soak myself with water at the peak inside the temple. It was completely televised throughout the planet. Oh. Were you naked or something? Probably not, no. It's only the head, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe the Ruvian media companies keep pressing the royal family to continue the tradition because tens of geezers tune in to watch the princess suffer while hiking a 10 kilometer long trial. And then upon reaching the top, they get prime time coverage of a gill dumping a bucket full of water on her nimble young body. I bet they make millions off advertising revenue alone. Uh, but body? This sounds a little risque for national holovision. Ah well, I was fully clothed in my ceremonial gown, obviously. I still got soaked though. Anyways, I'm getting bad flashbacks. Must have been hard. I forget sometimes that you're royalty. Eh, uh, honestly, I prefer if you just forgot altogether. I'm not really looking forward to going back. In fact, lately, it's been my greatest fear. I'm not the princess anymore. I'm supposed to be the leader of my people now. 
Whenever that realization sinks in, I never want to leave this ship. I just want to keep flying the blackjack and go on adventures with you. If I go back, I'm going to be chained. Even though I'll be the most powerful person on Ruvia Prime, the throne's going to become my prison. I won't be able to fly the blackjack anymore. I won't be able to be the hero. I'll just have to sit on a fancy chair for the rest of my life and watch Ruvia waste away just like the prior rulers before me until eventually I grow old too and I die. Asaga. It's quite interesting really, isn't it? All the backstory on all the characters. I never knew that Asaga was a Christian. That's one thing. Yeah. They rounded the corner and came upon yet another ladder. Asuka doubled down and panted, obviously in no condition to climb up. Let's take a short break, Captain. Don't know if I can climb up another ladder without slipping. Alright, I need a break too. The two of them crumbled down beside each other. Hey, Captain, you suppose what Claude's saying is right? If we really succeed with this mission, then none of this will ever have happened? I don't know from what she said, even though this mission will be wiped from history, a new universe where the outcome is the same, but where the time paradox has been resolved, will be created. So in the end, whatever we accomplished here will carry on in the next universe? I think that's the gist of it. Hey Captain, I'm a cult! Aren't you supposed to be hugging the girl in a situation like this? I've got to save her with my body heat, you know. Like what you did with Solar. I'm missing out. Heh. Ha ha. Shields offered Asuka his hand. Their ice-cold hands touched each other, fingers intertwined. They rubbed their fingers against each other, trying to resolve colour to their deathly white hands. The desperate situation robbed the moment of intimacy Asuka had hoped for. She inched closer to Shields. Hey, Captain, so, uh, ahem. In an out-of-character moment, Asuka suddenly lost her words and stared at the ground. That's unusual. This is the first time I've seen the proverbial cat catch your tongue. Ah, uh, uh, Captain, you know what? I'm going to ask, do you, uh, still like Chigara? Sorry, I know I, it's a dumb thing to ask. And you know what? It's alright if you still have feelings for her, somewhere down there. That's only expected. Eh, <laughs> it's not a deal breaker for me, as long as you only go out with me from now on. I trusted her. For a moment, she was the only person I lived for. And that was my downfall. Now I'm here to stop her. If I have any feelings for her, I need to control them. For the sake of this mission, the lives of billions are at stake now. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Eh? Uh -huh. Somehow... I'm glad to hear that. Asuka leaned against shields, their bodies finally touching. In both this universe and the one you came from, I'm always on your side, Captain. If you need someone you can depend on, I'll always be here. I won't ever stop protecting you. I'll fight alongside you to the bitter end. Don't say ominous things like that, Asuka. I think you've raised enough death flags in a single day. We're all going to get out of this alive. Eh? Uh Ma, -huh. uh, I guess that's a given, with you here. Fighting for a better future, huh? Even if the future changes, I know for sure that my feelings for you will stay the same. Eh? Uh -huh. You'll still be waiting for me, right? Yeah, Asuga. The mission's my number one priority, but this girl's always had feelings for me. I can't ignore her anymore. I was in the wrong. If there is a better future waiting for us, 
Let's spend it together. We still have many adventures ahead of us. It's too soon to retire. Not when we still have villains to defeat. The Sunrider still needs us. The Blackjack still needs you. After all, who's going to save the day without the Sunrider's ace? Eh? <laughs> yeah! With that, Asuka warmed herself by falling into Shields' lap. Hmm, let me just warm up. Oof oof oof! Your lap pillow ain't so bad! Heh, <laughs> I guess you could borrow my lap if it's for the sake of the mission. Eh? That's the only reason? So stingy! Sorry. Space Captain first, Boyfriend second. Lame. A lesson learned from past experience. Meh. Ah well. I guess I'll have to be satisfied with just this much for now then. Hmm. Asuka closed her eyes in complete contrast against her usual fiery attitude as the Sunriders CAG CAG She now looked completely defenseless on his lap. For a moment, Shields couldn't help but wonder if he should be doing this. For a moment, Shields couldn't help but wonder if he should be doing this. While his memories of the past hadn't perfectly crystallized yet, he remembered enough to know that his feelings had been his downfall. Well, I guess I can trust Asuga. I know for sure she's not a spy, at least. With that, Shields put his arms around her. The two of them spent the next few minutes warming themselves. T minus 47 hours before the Liberation Day Massacre. 11 hours until Chigara enters the mind stream. Alrighty. You know, what's sad is that none of this, none of the things that happened in this, are technically canon in the story. So basically, this is all basically for fun. And even so, this isn't the happy ending. So, it's like none of this has even happened. Such a shame, really. Oh well. More skipping. Alright, I'll keep a lookout and make sure the other cute shields doesn't show up. Okay, I'll go down there and see. Explosions! Okay, more skipping. Eh? There's only one thing that could have been. We're under attack! Shit, this didn't happen in my timeline. Yes, because I'm going to do more skipping. Everybody's here. Wow, it skipped right through it. Like, no comments or anything. Alright. Hello! Um. Shield suddenly realized what he was doing and pulled himself off the mercenary. Oh, um, yeah. Good job with the fix, Ikari. Y you too, Captain. W what? I it's not like I hugged you because I like you or anything. I was just relieved. That's all. Ha! Ha! Alright, alright. Thank you for your participation in this little operation, Ikari. But don't you have a certain lieutenant to go back to? Ooh. Oi, what's your prob? Too many awakenings getting to your head or something? Hmm. Anyways, it looks like turning our reactor back on scared packed back for now. Yep, here we go. More skipping. You know, it's quite funny how even Asuka thought that Ikari and the Lieutenant were dating as well. It's funny. It's not a dream, but the person beside you is the real Kyoto Shields, Ikari. He's the one who just saved the ship, remember? Asuka, I don't know what that imposter's been telling you, but there's no question I'm the real Kyoto Shields here. Don't worry, you're just confused right now, but you'll be safe soon. No way! Ah, uh, look, other captain, I don't even like you anymore. I think I'll stick with just this Kyoto Shields. Thank you very much. Oh, brilliant. Hello. Just then, Shigara appeared beside the other shields. Ah, great. So there's the reason why my other self thinks I'm the one who sabotaged the reactor. That's the one, Captain. He's a prototype. There's no doubt about it. He kidnapped me and forced me to shut the ship's reactor down. It was all a plot to render us defenseless, so Pact could launch their surprise attack. You see, 
There's no reason for you guys to get caught up in this too. Just let security take in the imposter. In fact, you all need a sortie now to defend the ship. Ah, Come on, myself. Don't just lap up Chigara's words so easily without a second thought. While the other shield's attention was diverted, Chigara, no, Chigara's body, sneered at him. Eh? Uh -huh. Chigara's still under the protect's control. Shit. Everything's still going according to their plan. The Marines approached, rifles drawn. Do I make a break for it? Well, I still can. Shit. But if we hide inside the ship, it's only a matter of time until the other shield captures me again. And now that we've bungled our first kidnapping attempt, there's no way I'm going to be able to capture Chigara again before she sorties for the final battle. I could try escaping the ship with Asaga on her rider and hatch a new plan to incapacitate Chigara after the battle, but before the massacre. Oh, there we go. Another face. Just then, another familiar face appeared. Captain, the Nightmare Ascendant is coming back for another pass. And I have even worse news. What could be worse than this? Alright. More skipping, please. Oh god, there's a lot. Okay, there we go. I need to figure out a way to end this. I managed to warn Fontana and restore power to the ship. Meaning, incapacitating Shigara is the only thing left. Come to think of it, there is another possibility. Oh, so that's still a thing? In my timeline, when Chigara entered the Mindstream, Asaga went berserk and nearly killed her. Given how much I've changed this timeline, it's obvious that Asaga's not going to attack Chigara in a fit of jealousy again. But we could still stage a repeat of that incident by having Asaga attack the Liberty. Ah, but that's ignoring the fact that Asaga's attempt fails in my timeline. This universe's Claude has been tasked by the prototypes with protecting Chigara, meaning the old Claude will stop Asaga again if Chigara's mission is ever threatened. And seeing how we're all standing at gunpoint right now, I don't think I'll be able to do anything to put old Claude or the Bianca out of commission. If only the other Claude was here. Getting Asaga to attack the Liberty is too much of a long shot at this rate. I've already altered the timeline too much. This Asaga is not going to be able to repeat history. We need to escape from the ship and rethink our approach. From this point on, I can't assume that things will proceed the same way as in the past. Shields whispered to Asaga. We're going to make a run for it. We need to escape the ship on the Blackjack. Think you can do that for me? Uh, Alright! Captain, leave it to me! But despite that, escape was not going to be easy. Not with a row of rifles trained on shields. Today, I'm finally going to become the hero! Hoo-yah! Asuka's eyes glowed bright blue as she awakened. She bull rushed towards the marines, throwing them off guard. Oh shit! The marines took their rifles off shields and aimed at Asuka. He took the moment to draw his pistol and unloaded his clip on the marines' shins. Running with superhuman speed, Asuka slid into the nearest marine's legs with her foot, knocking him to the ground. She rolled out of the way just as shock rounds shattered against the floor where she was sitting just a second ago. More marines trained their rifles on her and loosed shock rounds, but Asaga dodged them with ease, her supercharged brain processing information ten times quicker than usual. To her burning blue eyes, all of the marines' movements appeared sluggish, and the shock rounds swarmed towards her in slow motion. Yeah! Asaga crashed into a marine, knocking him down. Superpower notwithstanding, she was still an untrained girl. Cock. COC was not her strong suit. Close quarter combat. Shit, Captain, this way! Ava grabbed hold of the other Kyoto shields before he could protest and shoved him out of engineering. Overhead, the klaxon rang. Shields dived behind the console as shock rounds pounded his position. He peered over the console and saw a horde of marines in the hallway outside of engineering coming in to reinforce the injured squad. 
Way too many for them to handle. Ah, shit! This is nuts! Okay, so is this the same? It is! Oh, God! That was a lot. Thank God I don't have to read that again. Oof. Shields and Asuka emerged from the maintenance tunnel, one deck below. They scrambled to the hangar as fast as their feet would carry them. They arrived at the Sunrider enormous hangar. Eh? The blackjack's too far away! Come on! Let's grab that! Asuka pointed to a row of small buggies near the entrance. The entire floor of the hangar was approximately 200 meters across, necessitating the use of motor vehicles to quickly traverse the distance. Just then a horde of marines appeared running down the hallway. They trained their rifles and sent shock rounds, ricocheting past shields. Go, 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 go! The two of them scrambled to the buggy. I drive, you shoot! Really? Okay, mixing it up this time. Asuka put the pedal to the metal as shields wrapped his arm around Asuka's chest while holding his rifle in the other. Behind them, a half dozen marines managed to commandeer buggies of their own and took off after them. Once the buggy finished accelerating, Shield spun around and trained his rifle on the nearest marine, burning rubber behind them. He unloaded shock rounds at him to no effect. Shit! He gritted his teeth and loaded the bullets into the rifle. As long as he aimed for their buggies, the marines would probably survive. He took aim and shot the other buggy's tire out. It went into a screeching spin, throwing the marine off and sending him spinning across the hangar floor. One down! Suddenly, a forklift carrying a crate of rider munitions pulled out in front of him. Ah! Hang on! Jules wrapped his arms around Asuka and hang on for dear life as Asuga swerved around the forklift. They passed the still frame of the forklift, no further than a few centimeters from their faces. J jeez Eh? Uh -huh. Captain? She just realized that his hands were clenched on Asuka's boobs. Really? He immediately let go and spun around. Copping a feel in a moment like this? You perv. Eh? Uh -huh. It was just... He was cut off when shock rounds flew by, close enough to graze his hair. Ah! Ah! He raised his rifle, just two bullets left. He opens fire. Sparks flew from the front gate of the nearest enemy buggy, but otherwise had no effect. Damn! How about this? Asuka awakened once more and directed their buggy into the steel latest work of the Paladin's maintenance bay. Ah! Uh, are you crazy? Steel frames flew past shields as Asuka weaved the buggy through the maintenance bay, narrowly avoiding colliding into hangar crew and cargo crates. None of the marines dared follow them into the maintenance bays and opened fire behind them, the shock rounds bouncing harmlessly off the steel jungle. Shields put his head down as their buggy roared through the Phoenix's maintenance bay and arrived beside the blackjack. Ah, that was insane! The two of them jumped off the buggy and sprinted up the blackjack's loading platform while shock rounds pelted their position. I sure hope this thing can accommodate too. Get us out of here, Asuga! Okay, Asuga shut the cockpit and activated the blackjack. Ikari's voice came through the launch tower. Heh, I've managed to clear out the control crew manning this place. Blackjack, you're cleared for launch. Okay. We owe you one, Ikari. Seriously. Once this is all over, I think you're going to owe me some drinks, as well as a damned good explanation. Until then, I'll be waiting. Godspeed. The hangar alarm rang, and the crew scrambled out as the main airlock opened. The blackjack locked onto the linear rail. Oh, I forgot to put on my plug suit. Hang on. The G's are going to be crazy. Oh, great. Shields braced himself against the cockpit's spherical wall as the linear rail flung the blackjack out of the hangar. Everything became a blur as all the blood in his body flowed to the back of his body. The blackjack emerged out of the front of the ship into a field of fire. Black rounds exploded all around them, while laser beams split the black void of space like thunder. 
Can I skip this? I can't. Never mind. Alliance and Pact ships were tangled at dagger range, pounding each other with connected grounds. Ships exploding around them as swarms of riders spiraled around ships. Bombers trying to take down larger ships with missiles. While interceptors cut down the bombers with assault rounds. Let's get out of here while everyone's too busy trying to kill each other. Uh, heh. You might want to hang on. As we spun the blackjack around sharply, sending shields tumbling to the opposite end of the cockpit. Ah! A beam of laser cut through where the blackjack was located a split second before. Alarms bled throughout the cockpit as seven prototype riders approached the blackjack in a flying V. Ah! Looks like your ex's friends are hot on our tail! They're, they're not my ex's friends! Going out with the most popular guy in the galaxy? Sure a pain! Yeah! Asuka jammed her joystick forward and sent the blackjack on a dive as laser beams surrounded the cockpit. Shields flew to the roof, then did somersaults around the circumference of the cockpit sphere when Asuka spun the blackjack into a barrel roll. Ah! 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 Spears of light flew between the blackjack's legs, tails, and arms, but somehow never once struck the rider. Suddenly all the lights in the cockpit turned red and a shrill alarm bled. Missile lock! Sh shit! Shields rolled to the floor and felt his face get pancaked downwards as Asuka pulled into a high G loop and spun the blackjack around. A swarm of over 50 angry missiles streamed towards them. 50? Oh god. Yeah! Asuka's eyes once again ignited blue as she flew the blackjack in reverse between two opposite battleships exchanging kinetic rounds at dagger range. She sprayed assault rounds at the missiles, lighting the skies with explosions, all the while weaving her rider backwards through the battleship's flak nets. The rest of the missiles blew as they hit the battleship's flak wall. A pair of ambitious prototype units gave chase, while the other five split into two groups and circled around outside of the battleship's flak radius. We're gonna shake these gals! Come on, baby! Dance! She kicked her foot pedal upwards, hitting the reverse boosters. The prototype rider came flying towards the blackjack as it rapidly decelerated. At the last moment, Asuka flipped the joystick and activated the beam saber, turning the blackjack into a whirlwind of blades as the prototype unit sailed past. Like a buzzsaw, the blackjack's beam saber sliced the prototype unit into three sections. Asuka punched the boosters as the remains of the enemy exploded into a fireball behind them. G -gah! Blood dripped down her nose. Running out of juice! Been awakening! Too much! The explosions rattled the cockpit as a second prototype unit sprayed them with pulse rounds. Asuka pulled upwards, sending the prototype unit chasing after her. Look behind you! Completely focused on the blackjack, the second unit never realized that Asuka had lured it directly in front of the Alliance battleship's kinetic turret. Not even a shred of the prototype unit survived when the Alliance battleship blew its load at a point-blank range, completely vaporizing the rider. Ehehe! <laughs> the remaining five riders converged and rushed for the blackjack at the same time, attempting to overwhelm their adversary with sheer numbers. They unleashed pulse rounds, scraping the paint off the blackjack's armor. Eh? eh? What the hell was that? Can I see that again, please? <laughs> it's like flickering. It's like a light bulb. <laughs> okay. The light in Asuka's eyes flickered on and off. <laughs> she began to reach her limit. Captain! I'm gonna need your help! She rolled, she rolled the blackjack, sending shields tumbling across the cockpit, and then pulled into a drive, tossing him onto her lap. Eh? eh? Need more juice! Shields head spun from being tossed about in the cockpit. Before he knew what was happening, Asuka picked his face off her lap and pressed their lips together. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, I'm enjoying this too much. The tongues crossed each other. Asuka's taste filled Shields' mouth. Asuka gasped as they separated. Energy restored! Yeah! The flame in her eyes burst into a fireball. The blackjack rapidly accelerated. Shields wrapped his body around Asuka and hung on for dear life. The five prototype units shot towards them in a ring formation, spewing pulse rounds. He clenched every muscle in his body as the blackjack accelerated, pointed exactly at the center of the ring of hostiles. At the very last moment, Asuka pulled into a barrel roll and shot the blackjack's shoulder-mounted particle guns. Shield's jaws dropped when four laser beams emerged from the spinning blackjack, slicing all five prototype riders apart simultaneously as the blackjack barrel rolled through their ring formation. Light lit the rear of the cockpit as they exploded in a massive ring of fire. Pentakill! Pentakill? Okay. Th that was I insane! How come you never do shit like that when I'm commanding you? Ah, uh, uh, well, that was a makeout bonus. <laughs> uh. Asuka smiled coyly. You won't believe what a head job will get you. A head job? Idiot, get us out of here before more of them show up. And there we go. Can I skip? I can't. Yay! His heart sank when a new massive rider appeared before them. One which struck terror into Shields' heart. Shit! Ha 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 ha! So this is where you are hiding! But this is where your mission ends! The Nightmare Ascendant raised its particle gun and took aim. But before it could fire, it was enveloped in explosions. Phoenix and Paladin coming to assist! Yeah, I'm your enemy, Prototype! The Phoenix faced ahead and came at the Nightmare Ascendant, Katana drawn. The Nightmare Ascendant met the Phoenix's blade with his own, in a grand display of his overwhelming strength. The Ascendant shoved the Phoenix away, like a titan pushing back the valiant hero who had dared stand against it. Tch, we'll distract it! Asuka, you know what you have to do! Tch. Shield's heart pounded as the Blackjack hit its thruster leaving the Nightmare Ascendant to Akari and Kreisker. You guys, better whack that thing good for me! You two, don't die. Jules balled his hand into a fist. He decided with all his heart to remain with the others for the battle, but his own mission was too great to abandon. I can only trust in the other girls. Come on, my other self. You had better pull through. With that, the Blackjack left the battlefield and vanished into the abyss of space. Whew. And there we go. Oh. d has three hours before the Liberation Day Massacre. So roughly the same thing that happened with Sola. Other than a little bit of a different fight. And um, technically him kissing Asuka. <laughs> 